Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden. And in this video, I want to talk to you about a pretty serious topic and it's one that I think needs addressing. It's one that is the cause of a huge decline in many, many, many of our native species of birds in the UK and other wildlife, of course. And it's one that I feel I can only really highlight now I've got the kind of evidence to provide it, and I know people will have researched this time and time again, no doubt, and there's papers on it, etc., etc. But from my own experience, I now want to speak to you about a topic that, because I'm here in France, and check out the playlist on some of the French videos I've been doing on all the wildlife, flora and fauna I've seen in this beautiful country. But while I'm here, it's really highlighted what I think is the cause for a lot of declines in our British birds. Now, when we think of our British birds, and in particular some of our summertime visitors, so things such as wood warbler, but in particular things like the cuckoo, the nightingale, iconic species of birds, which in even in my lifetime I've noticed a decline in locally. Um, and that is all, well, not all, okay, not, there are many, many factors, of course, in, in, in all of this, and I've not done scientific research, but the biggest factor in most declines, whether it's birds, butterflies, bats, most of them is down to habitat loss. That's, again, from my personal experience and, and many others, many other accounts that I've read. Um, and the thing I want to talk to you about today is scrubland. Now, Whilst driving through France over the last four or five days, I've noticed an absolute abundance of it. And I mean this kind of stuff, naturally regenerating. And I'm talking about sort of shrubs interspersed with sort of uh, meadowy areas with woodland belts as well. You know, the kind of stuff you'd expect to see if you were rewilding a site. So if you had a piece of grass and you were simply just, excuse the road noise, um, I'm only on a little quiet road, don't worry, I'm not like stood next to a main motorway or anything. <laughs> now, if you were rewilding an area, somewhere like Nep, for example, um, in the south of the country, then a lot of it, rewilding is, it depends to what extent you go to, but rewilding is, generally speaking, just letting nature take its course with a little bit of management, um, but letting the natural regeneration of scrubland come back, things like hawthorn, silver birch, oak trees, pioneer species that if you just simply leave a piece of grass in the UK, given the soil types we've got and in many other temperate climates around the world, you will get a natural regeneration of native shrubs and trees after kind of brambles and things like that. But the progression will be from grassland, meadow and in time into woodland. And that's fantastic but it's that it's that mix of habitat where it's in between it's like a woodland edge um now um professor chris baines a wildlife gardening guru if you like the godfather of wildlife gardening has been saying for many years in particular in his books that a woodland clearing or woodland edge is one of the best habitats for wildlife and i couldn't agree more and that is in essence the kind of habitat we have here so it's the grassland going into that kind of mid shrub layer which is providing dense cover for birds now that's key because going back to what i was saying about talking when i was saying about um, you know turtle doves cuckoos nightingales they are all birds that relate to shrubs and scrubland for cover for to, to sing from i mean you know nine times out of ten you will hear a nightingale um you won't actually see it because it'll be right in the middle of some dense bramble scrub um or you know thickets of hawthorn and hazel and a mixture of scrub so they really are quite secretive birds and it's this lack of habitat that and obviously with creating all the wildlife gardens that i create around the uk i i get to travel all over the country, Scotland, Wales, the southeast, all over. And one common thing I notice is that we manicure every single square inch of our land. So that's from 
the fields to the hedgerows. The hedgerows are flailed mid-season when it's either breeding season or it smashes the berries off for the birds, the winter visiting birds such as the field fairs, red wings in the autumn months along with the blackbirds and many other species of course. Um, and the field margins, they're gone. The, you know, nowadays you will get wheat, rape, barley. Um, most of the agricultural crops that we grow are sown right up to the hedgerows. And again, this is not in all cases. I appreciate that. I know there are some farmers and landowners out there who are trying to farm in a lot more environment, environmentally friendly way. So they're trying to increase biodiversity, which should be on everybody's agendas because the, you know, we need bees and insects to pollinate the plants that provide the food that we eat. So without them, we are scuppered. <laughs> There's no coming back. You know, if we lose the insects, we ourselves will struggle as a species. I know in China, for example, they're at the point now in certain areas where they are having to hand pollinate apple trees um, just to get the fruit because the, there is such a lack of insects. And it's not, that's not just, you know, an isolated case. It's all over the world. So, and I know this might seem like a very roundabout way of getting to the point I'm making, but I think it's important to understand why we are losing turtle doves, nightingales, um, and all the migratory species that you would expect to see, cuckoo as well. Um, and it's not just these three species, but they are three key species that are obviously very highly monitored because of their declines by organisations such as the BTO and the RSPB. Um, so I think the fact that a lot of that habitat has gone so that we are simply in, you know, in the wider landscape. I mean, obviously, if you go more west country uh, and particularly into Wales and Scotland uh, and up the western side of the UK, it's more wooded in general and the east, generally speaking, is more um, agricultural land. But turtle doves actually thrive in kind of semi-agricultural settings. So they will feed on things like fumitory, which is a, a little annual uh, wildflower but that's only found in kind of disturbed field margins. So, um, you know, if we are ploughing up every year relentlessly, right the way to our hedges, which are flailed relentlessly, there's no chance for scrub habitat like that to regenerate. And it's this dense scrub where they're going to be singing from. Now, case in point, while I've been here, while I've been in France the last few days, I've heard, I mean, just now, just coming here to, to do this video for you guys, um, I've had nightingale, I've had cuckoo, I've had wood warbler just in the wood over the road. Okay, you could say, well, that's a separate issue. That's in a woodland. They are a woodland bird. I appreciate that. But the nightingale and the cuckoo, um, they're two species that are absolutely reliant upon habitat like this, you know, dense cover. Um, water has an association as well, obviously, to provide insects as well um, that is, are associated with water to provide food for these birds. So that has an implication on the bird numbers as well. But in general, it's this scrubby habitat and it's not just those. It's all our songbirds, our warbler species um, that are going to be nesting in dense scrub. And in general, I have found there is a massive, massive increase. Black kite. And I kid you not, I bet you the mic's not going to pick it up, but just the other side, and if you think that I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere, I'm, there's civilization here, there's houses and other things, in some of the scrub on the other side of the road, I promise you, I just heard a prr, 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 which is a turtle dove. So nightingale, cuckoo, turtle dove, I've had all three species in this in this area within a, a mile radius of where I'm stood right now because it's scrubby habitat. It's, it's not quite as simple as that, but it almost is. And the quicker we understand that to provide habitat for these birds, we need to let nature regenerate naturally, even if it's not to let it regenerate to entire woodland, you know, in its eventual um, outcome is what it would end up as we need to let areas like this grow because these birds are vanishing from our landscape. I mean, I was fortunate enough to, to rescue a juvenile cuckoo from the edge of a road um, down in Essex where there are a couple of breeding pairs not far from where I live. Um, so if you haven't seen that video, do check it out. There's a really nice uh, sort of 
rehabilitation story there where I got it ringed by the BTO and then released really, really nice, incredible experience that was, something I'll certainly never see in my lifetime again, I'm sure. But seeing these habitats in France has made me realise that, you know, a lot of the French take, and again, I'm, I'm generalising a little bit, I realise that, but a lot of the French take a different view on our countryside. It's almost like they work alongside it rather than against it or to manage it or to constantly fight it. You know, it, the whole point of the natural world is to let it have its own equilibrium, let it find its own balance because it does just that. You know, if you have too many sparrowhawks in one area predating songbirds, eventually the songbird numbers will drop and in time, the sparrowhawks numbers will drop also. It's the same with parasitic wasps and holly blues. They're on a seven year cycle. I could go on. It's, you know, there's so many cases and in every element of the natural world, there are cases where there are peaks and troughs in everything we have. So nature has an incredible way of finding a balance. If the food is there for one thing, the predators will obviously increase as well until the predators increase to a point where the prey drops and then of course the predator drops and the cycle starts again and it's exactly that with this sort of habitat you know if this habitat that these birds require drops and diminishes and becomes less and less because it's either plowed up or it's flailed or it's turned into housing then that's then gone permanently until it's left to grow back and nature has an incredible way of bouncing back another thing that i, I read about this morning was um uh, the recolonization of the the storks the white storks that are here in france now they went pretty much extinct um, up until a few decades ago when they started coming back and there's now about two and a half thousand um, to two thousand six hundred i think pairs across france and particularly the west and the marais poitavan where i was um, uh, near the start of this sort of uh, trip around france where i did see one or two uh, pairs on nests and one or two flying over sadly again I was unable to get photos because I was driving at the time on the motorways and just couldn't stop but they are another success story so they are one example of how you know things can repopulate nature has this amazing ability to bounce back if given a chance but of course if we don't provide the chance if we don't let this scrubland habitat regenerate it won't have the opportunity to allow life back into it so I hope that this video has gone part way to explaining the importance of scrub what we should be doing to encourage more of it um, i know space is slightly more of a premium that you know the area of france is roughly two times the size of england uh, with roughly the same population so it's not quite a fair representation of exactly how we should have it but that doesn't mean to say that we can't change what we do we should be having more field margins around our crops that we grow even if it's a five meter band because that five meter band around the entire width of a field will provide acres of habitat for our insects which provides food for the birds the bigger birds and everything the whole ecosystem is supported just by the introduction of that very very simple habitat that needs one cut a year it's very very simple or leaving and let to grow back to scrub you know it's just <laughs> it is that simple and i think the more we can spread the message and let people know that these are the sorts of habitats that we need to be providing for our native flora and fauna and again it's not just birds it's butterflies dragonflies bats everything else in between that will benefit from this kind of habitat so I really, really, really hope that this video, as I say, has shed a little light on what I think is a very simple solution to, and again, there'll be some scientists out there saying, no, it's not just that, it's X, Y, and Z as well, which yes, again, I've already highlighted it. I know this isn't the sole answer to solving all the issues to do with our migratory species, but it will certainly go a long, long way. So countryside management and letting habitat like this recolonize parts of the uk would go a massive way to helping the declines of these incredible birds because once they're gone it's very very hard for them to come back and i hope that by hearing the turtle of the nightingale and the cuckoo <laughs> within 10 minutes of being here will just highlight and i mean central france well just central southern france um down near rocca at the moment i hope it highlights 
just how good this habitat is if we can provide space for it. So thank you very much for watching guys. I really, really appreciate the support and I hope that's given you guys some ammunition um, to maybe go you know, approach your local landowners, that sort of thing, and, and suggest these ideas to them because you know, it's the people that own land like this. Obviously our gardens, they're not going to be the sorts of habitat where we're going to be getting turtle doves, nightingales, um, you know, and cuckoos, generally speaking. It's the bigger landscape picture that, you know, they need several acres. So, you know, approach whoever you can, if you know landowners, farmers, um, you know, and just talk to them. The, be the best thing to do is try and educate people as to the importance of habitat like this, which might, to many people, seem like a waste of time and a pointless exercise. And I appreciate, again, if it's farmers in particular, they're going to be want to monetize all the land they've got. So there is a balance. I appreciate that. People are trying to make a living as well. But I think we have to find a way to coexist with these sorts of habitats and the natural world if we want to survive as a species. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give the video a like, and I'll be sure to bring you many more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in videos to come. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.